Hi guys, I'm Garen. I'm JD. And this is Investigating Comic Club, where we chronologically read, review, discuss, and rate specific crucial stories of the medium. Indeed, and we hope that you guys will subscribe to become members of Comic Club yourself. Share your opinions of the stories in the comments, and stick around till the end of our discussion for our episodic comic quality poll, as well as after the Misfit Picture Show's logo for any potential bloopers that the episode could provide. Mr. Garrett, Powers of Ten, number six, by Jonathan Hickman, R.B. Silva, and Marte Gracia. Gracia. Here we are at the end of this stage of the journey. Yes, this is it. Do you want to share some th initial thoughts or just dive on in? Um, initial thoughts, um, I'm just going to throw it out there. I hate Powers of Ten, usually. <laughs> Let's jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, right away the cover reminds me, I pulled this up because I wanted to show you, this house ad that the great Alan Davis did for Fall of the Mutants. Oh, wow. Similar, right? Yeah. Potentially intentional, or maybe not. Fall of the Mutants, yeah. And then the first quote, and now we build. Now we build. I think it's again Jonathan Hickman. Yeah. You know, he's he's put the foundation in place. He's like, here it is, guys. I've laid out my Bible of what the X-Men is mm -hmm. and can be. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, this mm -hmm. issue's name is House of X, mm -hmm. which is cool that it's yeah, it's doing really that. Very fitting. That initial page of Professor X it was like refreshing to see him just smiling, mm -hmm. walking, see his face, mm -hmm. and then going back to these initial pages from, yeah. from is that Powers or House or both? Both. Is it both? We've okay. seen this like three times now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, cool. yeah it's crazy. It's like, which it just keeps repeating us, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it was in the first issue. Yeah. Then it might have been, and then it was in Powers, and then it was in again, and then this might be the fourth time we've seen this. Hmm. this it's summer. layered, you know? He did say in the, the San Diego Comic Con that You'll read this issue, and then kind of like a parallel series, you know, a side yeah. series, companion series, you'll get similar events or even sometimes the same event, mm -hmm. and you'll see it in a different light. And, yeah. Um, I think he certainly accomplished he that did. goal. Especially even like The Magician, The Tower, and The Devil. Mm -hmm. Like all that. There's been so much in the series, you almost forget that those guys were characters yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that tower is certainly... Yeah. Mm -hmm. More significant. Now. Yeah. I did not reread any of this series since we started. You reread I read it once. halfway through. Okay, halfway through yes. you reread. Yeah. I am very excited to reread now, mm -hmm. and I'm going to challenge myself to reread the 12 issues before next week's X Men number one. I am glad that I waited. <clears throat> yeah. I think that. Um, I'm glad that I cool. did half. Mm hmm. For me to recall some of these things, because again, mm -hmm. it's so deep that it's. And it was funny, like right going from that to, to yeah, this whole scenario mm -hmm. with uh, with them both on the bench and being like, okay, I've already seen this. I'm kind of looking for words to see if something mm -hmm. changed, but mostly pretty much all the same. And then to go to year one thousand, and I'm like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Yeah, but boy, great but colors. Great colors, Gorgeous. vibrant, yeah. oh, beautiful. And it was even one where like, oh great, it's more wording. I'm like, oh Wolverine, cool. And then, hmm. but it was all great up until talking about tomorrow is Ascension, mm -hmm. um, which that still throws me for a loop. But in a whole, leading up to Wolverine doing doing what he does, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that in a whole of year of one thousand, that in itself was enough to be like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think the big reveal there, the exciting thing, the final kind of black. So ends <clears throat> the sixth line. No, yeah. And finally, I, I put that down. I was like, exclamation mark. I was like, cool. We got the sixth line. <laughs> yeah, it really made me want to. And I resisted because I didn't want to do that before recording this. Uh -huh. But it made me really want to check out all ten lives, right? Ten? Yeah. Yeah. Because I wanted to see, well, wait, if this is the 10th, then what was, if this was the 6th, what was the 7th, what was yeah. the 8th? I wanted to kind of figure all that yeah. stuff out. Yeah. 
you flipped over a lot of pages there, but still at the same time, I don't think there's anything in particular I want to talk about. I did always, I was feeling like this librarian was going to have to be Charles or somebody that we knew to mm -hmm. pay it off with, but then no, but Logan and Moira yeah. are prisoners yeah. within this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just even like the whole line about like being free. Well, they don't know what free is, so what is the, you know, it's just like, oh yeah, well, let's start a all out, you know, rebellion. rebellion. Again, really cool that Logan essentially is immortal and Moira essentially is immortal. Uh -huh. It's, it's, I don't know, it's cool stuff. He's really, it's almost difficult to talk about because there's so much to think about. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's so much to, because again, yeah, we could take a few pages by pages, because mm -hmm. I mean... That's why I kind of just skimmed over those ones, but in, in a whole is like him even saying like it took us the Sentinels bought us years, you know Nimrod bought us decades, mm -hmm. and just it shows all these like the progression, kind of the progression of the technology. Yeah, like these, progression you know, of the technology that has got us to this point for sure. And it's even Sentinels gave us years, yeah. Nimrod's gave us decades. Again, because there's so much to think about. I'm, my mind is like, okay, what was it? Year 100 was yeah. where that Nightcrawler and the Devil, you know, like, and yeah, the yeah. metal one that ended the year 100, then it's like... No, it's going to be a great one to reread and, and see when yeah. this comes out to kind of put it, because... And it was funny, during that whole time of, mm -hmm. of the librarian being like, so, uh, whether or not, you know, if, if you were to die, you'll just come back and we won't know, but you will. And you'll go past this mm -hmm. or do I push you send you off that way we can progress and right. get over this and I'm over here the whole time right before I'm like someone gonna kill her please <laughs> <laughs> kill her <laughs> kill her <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm like, so I'm gonna kill her now. Before like, the ascension. Yeah, like before, I was just like, oh my god, who's gonna kill her? Someone's gotta. And then for that's really cool for Wolverine to do that, for yeah. Logan to like straight up just was that fast enough for you? I'm like, because oh I was wrapped up in the dialogue, yeah. like thinking about things. But you were no, right like... away once I once because giving her choice, like, yeah. wait, you're giving me a choice? Yeah, you have a choice. I'm like. He's monologuing. <laughs> Kill her! Kill her! That's great. Yeah. Uh, that's really fun. That's really cool. Pretty good comic book flip from the panel yeah. to Wolverine's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Got him straight you through the head. Did you, were you reading a panel to panel yeah. at this point? Yeah. So when you did that. Yeah, and as if no choice but it becomes a small part of God. <laughs> and I even was like. Did you miss a panel? Wait, yeah, what? I know. I was like, like what? And then did a lower up and robot heaven tell me was that fast <laughs> enough for you? <laughs> Love it. It's pretty great. And then we're into Moira's journal. Oh, and that that was I mean I took notes, but it, it was funny having her journal, if we hadn't already seen Sinister's stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of and how that goes, and when I first read that I didn't catch that The gossip page. The gossip pages as far as it being a future kind of thing of Mm. which mm -hmm. you kind of broke down for us so that kind of triggered it for me for these as far as being like is it, are these notes of things that have already happened oh, okay that has happened mm -hmm. okay does that oh is this stuff that was going in the future okay that had you know so i'm like it's take, almost all of it yeah so it's all of it it's 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 her journals of these last years mm -hmm. but for us last 12 issues mm -hmm. yeah putting it in that order but it was cool like to see each level of being like, oh, I wrote each one down, you know, and then seeing the ones that are blacked out. And what yeah, the like. ones that are censored. I do like one last thing that I will say about the librarian. I took it as, again, I look forward to rereading it, but I took it as him basically saying, you guys thought that machines were the enemy. At first you thought you could live with humanity and then machines are the inevitable en enemy. But actually it was humanity all along. Because mm -hmm. humanity creating us, when humanity reaches the point where they're creating our technology and they have almost supplanted Mother Nature, yeah, the evolution, the necessary evolution of, hu of mutant kind becomes unnecessary because the environment, like mutants are the evolution for humanity to survive their environment. Yeah. When humanity 
kind of takes Mother Nature and the environment off the page and they just kind of create whatever environment they want. Yeah. The evolution of mutant kind is unnecessary, right? Yeah. So that their kind of relationship with technology, that is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Humankind doing that to their environment is the enemy. So that makes sense that now Charles Xavier's dream of living side by side, Moira has convinced him, no, we yeah. need to separate ourselves. Yeah. And you know, a separatist environment, it's not necessarily always it, yeah. a good thing. No, yeah. And that's why it's it's and I do like how it jumps back to them on the bench and then shows mm-hmm. him like losing his mind. Yeah. You know? Like Yeah, I'm glad they went further with that. Mm-hmm. Um Moira's journal I love so many, so much of that. I do love that they, again, Hickman has several times he's gone back and he's kind of retold us things, but I feel like I don't think it's misspent space. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of really dialing it in for us. Yeah. So that we are on board as we go forward. I get confused a little bit where her journal starts to say apocalypse shows up. We're not going to be able to have a conversation with him for a while. Mm-hmm. We can only hope to stop him from holding sway over certain Omega level mutants, which in the past, Paris, you know, the pair the guy yeah, from yeah. Paris, yeah. his name's Exodus. He is one of the Omega level mutants that Apocalypse gotcha. has hold over. And then we go to Sinister and how she disagreed with Charles and Magneto. Yeah. And that Sinister has already created a chimera, which we knew about with the Thunderbird. Mm-hmm. But then she says that we lost Magneto. Yeah. Which is, yeah. that's issues we're leading up to. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that kind of threw me off, actually, which is, it's like Sinister was the last thing that kind of connected. Mm-hmm. To where we are, right? Yeah, because okay. as far as we lost Magneto, that doesn't make sense. But we saw but that we d- in one of the timelines. We, well, that's the thing. Right. We saw that one, right? Mm-hmm. But then even entry 57, as far as her realizing she has to remove herself and fake her death. You're right. So The faking the death we hadn't really seen yet. Well, or as far as faking the death there. could have been what has happened in, six, in the Marvel Universe yeah. proper. That she died from the legacy virus. But she's already in that no space. So that's supposed to take place after Magneto's betrayal. So there is still yeah, wonky stuff. Well, which makes sense for, I mean, as what I took it as, as far as her realizing, um, I had to then go into the shadows where I belong. Yeah. Which goes to show we hadn't seen her in four issues. Right. But I just wonder why was the journal entry about Magneto's betrayal before that? Yeah. I'm just as bad as they are, if not worse. Which I loved. And because I, I was thinking, you know, she says she disagreed with Charles and Magneto going to Sinister. Mm-hmm. And you could kind of feel like she even says something about, does she say something about men? Something like at the so end. Is that a thing that men do? Is that what they she think said? they can shape the world to their liking and be bend others to whatever they will. Right. And then she says that she lost Magneto. And it's, she realizes, I was thinking, well, you're mani- you're trying to manipulate just the way that you're saying that the men were trying to yeah, manipulate. Yeah. The, and then she just said, it's like, I'm just as bad as they are. Yeah. And she has said multiple times now about in that journal, how she's going to have to really beat yeah, Charles. She's, she's beating it into him. His, his love, like his, yeah. his, the thing that makes him him. Yeah. She's like, oh, it's so sad that you love so much. And it's just like, it's, yeah, it's gotta go if we're to survive. Yeah. And it is certainly a um, pessimistic point of view, but she's a realist. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I'm like, are you creating the worst enemy of all time with Charles by doing this to him? Oh, yeah. No, there's, I mean, there's, There's she manipulates this entire, all of her journals Mm -hmm. is manipulation. Yeah. But then she's lived through 10 lives where she's seen the decimation of the species. Yeah. And that's, well, that's the thing. It's, we talked about this last issue with or was it the one before about me being like well how can uh professor x get this way well it's like hey this many mutants died of course Mm -hmm. he broke it's like yeah she knows they lose every time she keeps telling them we lose every time yeah there's so much that they can explore having them come to meet up with her and it being like she's like hiding you know like only they know she's there 
Yeah. And did you get a sense of her? I still want to know what's under that. Why he's helmet? Yeah. Like, is she I controlling th- that helmet? Is she? I don't think so at all. Because it? I think I think that she's she doesn't seem very trusting of them Mm-mm. at this point. Mm-mm. No, she. That's that's the thing. Is she's? I don't understand what's. I feel like maybe these are she answers created, we haven't gotten. Have Have I created a monster? Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, in this current timeline, yeah. what is the chronologically last thing we've seen? I feel like chronologically last thing we've seen. Most up-to-date moment in the current timeline. They've gone on the mission, we lost Cyclops, possibly stopped the Master Mold and threw it into the sun, and it cost them Wolverine. They came home, they were rebirthed, and Storm was cheering. This is my brother. This is my sister, you know her. Yeah, I keep thinking that's that. We've seen this ending though twice now. Mm-hmm. But that's But this goes towards further. Yeah, further back. But I believe the last thing we see is everyone being cheered and celebrating. Chanting? Mm-hmm. Not this celebration, the chanting one. Correct. I think that's the current thing we've seen. So we haven't seen any repercussions of the X-Men going out there by humanity, that the X-Men flew up there and annihilated that master mold, that it cost lives up there. So the initial, so the most recent thing is them rebuilding... Cyclops. Cyclops, yeah. Of them. Which will then kind of take us into... The next day, yeah. what are the repercussions for the X-Men essentially doing that hmm. mission against humanity. So, we've got some big stuff coming up in the next uh, couple months. We've got the Dawn of X, which is six titles, I believe. X-Men, X-Force, New Mutants, Marauders, Excalibur, and the Fallen Angels. I believe that's them. I don't think I missed any. You didn't. So... It's going to be interesting. One thing I just kind of discovered by looking at the coming months, all six issues will have their fourth issue released on the December's Wednesday before Christmas. So the week before, I think it's like Fallen Angels, Excalibur, Marauders, their issue threes are coming out. One week later, all three of those titles are getting their issue four plus the others. So all six titles will be on issue four in the middle of December. So like we're ending, we're ending the year with a back-to-back yeah. drop it all. I feel like the fourth issue is kind of, okay, we're wrapping up our initial stories to set mm-hmm. the stage. And then wave two, they've announced Wolverine issue one in January. They're going to mm-hmm. announce some other ones. Yeah. So it's going to be a pretty interesting, cool month. I like that they had at the end a reading order. In case you're wondering what any of these things say at the end, it just says... Exactly what each of those titles are. Oh, just like X Force and Quality. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nicely done, Gary. Just, 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 just in my spare time, you know. <laughs> so here is Powers of Ten, number six. What did you give it, Gary? So I give this one an A. I'll okay. give this one an A. Yeah. Cool. I give it an A as well. Yeah. I think the series as a whole. I would give the series, both series as a whole, an A at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was without its flaws, but its qualities far outshine any flaws that I would... Like, the flaws are not even worth mentioning. We have talked about them in the past. Mm -hmm. But I would say at this point, Hickman and his creative collaborators have done above and beyond what I could have expected as a lapsed... Not even for any real reason, except for I was really happy with the ending of my X-Men storyline. As a lapsed reader and haven't read X-Men comics, current X-Men comics for four or five years, something like that. I can't wait for more, and I've really enjoyed these last 12 weeks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. We have 12 weeks in and out, and and we jump right into it. Jump right into it with X-Men, which is great. I'm really excited about that. How do you feel about... A brand new reader to it after these 12 issues. 
I'm just as excited as I was probably the first day. Even more now with this powers, I was very not sure how it was going to end. Mm -hmm. Or not even ending, but knowing like it giving us that little boom right before we go into the, the Dawn of X. Yeah, not only am I looking forward to Hickman's, I'm rooting for the others. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. okay, we're going to read the first issues, yeah. maybe the first story arcs. Yeah. I hope we read all of them. Yeah, yeah. Until next year. Like, yeah. yeah, if you guys are entertaining me, sure, I'd love to read two X-Men comics a week. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. an hour of my life. Yeah. Of course I'd yeah. love to mm -hmm. read an hour of X-Men new stories every week. Yeah. It'd be so much fun. So we gave it A's. We want to know what you guys gave it in the comic quality poll right up here. A, B, C, D, or F. How did you feel this one ended? And uh, comments below, please. Thank you guys for coming along in this first step of the journey, in this first step of the story, and I hope you guys are enjoying the ride, and uh, hope you continue watching. To be continued. thoughts and theories yeah. and hopes for the future. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs>